Good to have you here today. If you're able to, please stand with us and we'd like to sing a song to God be the glory. I've asked my uh, wife to sing along with us today. Oh, you can turn the volume down. Yeah, I don't want to compete with them. That's okay. I did that during Sunday school. To God be the glory, to God be the glory, great things he hath done. And God be the world that he gave us his Son, to yield it his life and atonement for sin, and open the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God, the vilest offender who truly believes, the wonder of Jesus, a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. How many of you have that song memorized and you know what the words? Good. You're the ones that have to sing loud. We'll sing the last verse and uh, change the key. Great things he hath taught us, great things he hath done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport, when Jesus, let's raise the roof. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Our Father God, we thank you for the day today. Even though it's an hour early, we've had less sleep, we're not feeling as well as we normally do, but we know that it is still a day that you have made for us. And so we rejoice, we're glad in it. And we gather together today to worship you and give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Morning, morning. What a day, what a day. My uh, least favorite time change. They've been talking about getting rid of this time change for about 20 years, haven't they? We still have it. So uh, congratulations on those of you who came. If anybody comes in an hour late, everyone turn around and laugh at them as they walk through the door. Just kidding, let's not do that. That wouldn't be how we do things around here. Uh, we'll just act like everything's normal. If someone walks in an hour late, that would be at 1130, right? We might get one, but we, we won't even act like anything's going on if someone walks in. So uh, anyway, welcome this morning. It is also Pi Day. Pi Day, 314, 3 point. I know that because I was a teacher in school and all the math nerds uh, used to make a big deal of Pi Day. Y'all didn't know that? It, today's Pi Day? Yeah. I was born on Pi Day, yeah. Yeah, it's my 30th birthday today, so. Um. <laughs> Anywho. Um. I have more gray hairs now that I've been hanging with you guys for about six months than I did before, so that's good. But uh, 
We're, it's good to be here this morning. All joking aside, let's uh, focus in. If you're a guest, I, I think everyone here is home folk, but if you're a guest, we are glad you're here. If you do us a favor and fill out the form on your bulletin side, I don't see one new person, but I always want to make sure I do that um, just in case. Um, so this is always an interesting day with a time change to see if it affects us, but a good day to be outside. It's beautiful today. So a um, couple of announcements coming up. Uh, the, we have a, a lot happening here in the next couple of weeks as we move towards Easter. And uh, I've been saying over and over in the past few weeks that uh, we're going to build towards Easter like it's a normal Easter, but nothing's really normal with Corona going on. So we don't know what to expect, but we're going to get a good practice run for hopefully no Corona 2022, hopefully. Uh, so uh, we, we still might get a flux of guests in that day. So we're going to build it as a invite uh, day. I don't think we'll be busting at the seams just because people's precautions and cautious spirit, uh, but we could have some new people here. So we're going to be aware of that and focused on that and, uh, and trying to make them feel at home as they come. With that said, we have some sprucing up to do around here. So we're going to have a work day on March 27th, uh, just some mulching and getting bugs out of our lights and things like that uh, on March 27th, Saturday morning at 8.30 a.m. Also, uh, next week is church council at 5 o'clock p.m. Um, if you are a head of a, uh, one of our uh, team's committees, uh, I invite you to be there so we can talk about some of those housekeeping things and making some decisions uh, and just sprucing some things up around here. Okay, I think that's about it. Has anybody got anything else to add? Read your bulletin. There's info in there, details in there. Um, uh, so make sure you look it over, look at the back and all that good stuff. All right, well, let's pray. I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I always kind of feel that way, so I guess it's just normal. Uh, we're good? All right, let's pray together. Lord, we thank you so much for this time. Thank you for um, this beautiful weather you've given us that we know you are the maker, creator, sustainer of all things. God, we uh, worship you this morning. We pray we will center our lives in the gospel, in the the beautiful story that you have given us, the beautiful truth you have given us of your death, your um, and your resurrection, and your coming to earth to save us. And uh, Father, I pray we'd set our eyes, set our hearts, set our uh, our lives on you this morning. And as we um, just continue to press on towards the things you'd have us to walk in wisdom, walk with you. We pray all this in your holy name, Jesus. Amen. I want to invite our uh, say a special guest, but he's an, a regular around here. Pastor Ken is going to come lead our children this morning in our children's time. So if we have a child or children, we have my child. Stick our king and God, crown him with many crowns. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. Hark how the heavenly anthems drown all music but its own. Awake my soul and sing of him who died for thee. Matchless King through all eternity. Crown him the Lord of life, who triumphed o'er the grave, and rose victorious in the strife for those who came to save. His glories now we sing. Who died and rose on high, who died eternal life to bring, and lives at death may die. Crown, Crown him the Lord of love, behold his hands and side, the good
Let's continue singing about the King of Kings, Amazing Love. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted, you were condemned. I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true, and it's my joy to honor you in all I do. Back to the beginning, I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted, you were condemned. I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. It is my joy to honor you in all I do. seated. You know, as we uh, approach the Easter season, our thoughts tend to be uh, more uh, focused on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I, you know, and uh, there's so much power in his resurrection. Uh, Jesus said, because I live, you will live also. And the Apostle Paul, he said that if Christ had not rose again, that we would still be in our sins and our faith would be in vain. And the song that I'm about to sing, I think, really points out the, the hope that we have in, in the resurrection. to say they just lost their dearest friend all that he said now he was dead so this was the way it would end the dreams they had dreamed were not what 
what they seemed now that he was dead and gone the garden the jail the hammer the nail how could a night be so long then Just a man, but deep in her heart, she knew from the start, somehow her son would live again. Then came the morning. back in the book of James this morning. And um, just be prepared in the weeks ahead as we, as you can see that it's ever changing with how we sometimes have more instruments up here. Today we sung hymns and the piano and uh, that, that's okay. I heard a good quote this today that said, not to say we don't like what we're doing, we like what we're doing, but if we do some things where we don't like, someone said, uh, if you come into a church and you don't like the way they do their music or do their worship, it's an opportunity for you to experience the way someone else worships. So think about that as we move towards the days ahead. Um, and we are just every week kind of shaking it up with different things, different people. And uh, thank you for being a part of that and singing. That's the, the, the priority of what we do. As we've talked about the past few weeks, it's our, um, it, we got to remember the point of why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, and the point is for us to all be unified in worship, um, no matter what style we have or what we do, and that goes into anything that we do here, uh, the point of why we do what we do. So the point this morning is uh, that we look to Jesus in James chapter 3. So let's stand together, we're going to read. I want to do a little intro into last week. I had you stand a little early, but that's okay. Last week we talked about the tongue. And James is talking about, basically, it's a pastoral book of a pastor 
There's a lot of dissension going on in his church, in, in the church that James is writing to, and he is just uh, going through saying, if you want to walk with God, this is what it looks like. Uh, these are the, the, um, uh, the, the overflow, and this is what the, the actions look like. You're going to be acting, you're going to be doing, you're going, your mouth's going to look like this. And last week, he went in specifically to the tongue. It's a fascinating passage. But this is one of the statements made last week, and I want you to think about this as we move today into wisdom. Man, what a powerful, powerful word that is, uh, wisdom. It will shape, control, uh, guide your life. So last week with the tongue, we said this, if you can control your tongue, you can control your life. Now listen, he, he hear that. And this is good that you get this going into what we're talking about today. If you can control your tongue, you can control your life. Doesn't mean if you get control of your tongue that your life's in order. But what it does mean, if you're looking close enough to your analyze your words, you hear me, your words, you're looking in that deeply dissecting words you're going to be dissecting your heart you're going to be digging into that well that those words come from and why they come out the way they do and the things that you say it gets to the well of the heart so let's look at james 3 i, I always want to go where we were before because it's leading in this is a letter remember the scriptures written written in letters so you need to get the context if you weren't here last week talked about the tongue now he's moving into wisdom that's that's intentional okay Verse 3, excuse me, chapter 3, verse 13 through 18. Who among you is wise in understanding? By his good conduct, he should show that his works are done in the gentleness that comes with wisdom. A lot of adjectives here. We're going to pay attention to those. The gentleness that comes with wisdom. Think of the tongue and, and going to the heart, and we're back to action being a reflection of the heart. That tongue is an action. Your works are in action, and what you do is an action of the heart, an overflow of the heart. What's going on in here affects what you do on the outside. Verse 14, but if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your heart, don't boast and deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there is disorder in every evil practice. But the wisdom from above is pure. Look at these adjectives. And peace-loving, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, unwavering without pretense. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who cultivate peace. Let's pray together. God, we thank you so much for giving us wisdom beyond this world, for wisdom to navigate the course of our life and set our sights on what's to come not only here but in the hereafter thank you for that thank you for um, lifting uh, the weight that we so often bring upon ourselves god help us to grab onto godly wisdom this morning that we might live as you has have called us to free for if the son has set us free we are free indeed may we walk in your liberty this morning in your name Amen. Guys, it's imperative that we get this this morning um, as we are in, an, in a culture of knowledge and information, but far, far, far from wisdom. Far from wisdom. So this is speaking heavily to the culture we live in today. And this should set you free. Every week we come in here and we dive into scripture. I, I hope you feel the urge for it. Uh, we do it on our own, but there's something special about being corporate together. And, and hearing God's word, uh, that we need this because we get easily entangled in us and in and, and our schedules. And this should be a weight, of, uh, weight lifted for you. Uh, I was going to say a weight of freedom. That's a good way to say it. A weight of freedom on you. So let's look at the first section here. This is written in a great, uh, you know, if you come on Wednesday nights, how I like comparison and contrasting charts. This is what James is doing right here. Contrasting earthly wisdom from godly wisdom. Earthly wisdom is described in verse 14 through 16. Look what he says here. He says, we live in a time of knowledge, but not of wisdom. Knowledge essentially is this. And once you get these two words, knowledge is the accumulation of facts. It's knowing things. Okay? There's a lot of people that know a lot of stuff out there. Does that mean they do good things? Not at all. We are in the information age where we can learn more about anything and everything quicker than ever before. 
It's insane, and I could have pulled up statistics. It's not necessary to get the point. You realize this. You click up a button, you can find out anything you want to find out. Uh, but wisdom is a different bird. It's a totally different thing. Listen, wisdom is the ability to use that information responsibly. responsibly. You've known a lot of smart, intelligent people that end up in dire straits. Right? We all do. And maybe you're one of them. Maybe you've walked through things you should not have walked into and, and into trenches you should, have not, should not have tread into because of a lack of wisdom. Not a lack of knowledge, but a lack of wisdom. And here's what James is doing. He's showing us this dichotomy between earthly wisdom and godly wisdom and going backwards to the root of where they come from. The Bible does that a lot. We get to the surface and this is in our thinking patterns, in our actions, in our words. And go back where they're coming from. Why are we thinking the way we, we, we are thinking? Why are we doing the things we are doing? Uh, why are we saying the things we are saying? Thinking backwards, I like to call it. Tracing our steps. Why did this come out of here? What's going on in here? Why did we do what we did? What's going on here? If we start looking at those things, we'll figure out what's going on here. There's a deeper root. And this is what he's doing. He's tracing us back. So specifically, God's wisdom he's talking about here. The king of the universe made all things. It's essential that we understand that. that this is wisdom talking about biblical, godly wisdom. This is true wisdom, objective wisdom, God's wisdom, that he made all things. And the challenge here, here's the rub here. We want to be the point. Wednesday night crowd, you're already probably giggling at this one, but think about it. We want to be the point. God's the point, the point of all things. There's no way around that. We want to be the center of the universe. It's in us. Just watch our commercials. What are these guys paid to do in commercials? They're paid to quench your thirst. They're paid to go to what you feel, and everything is about doing it what's best for the individual, for you. Man, Burger King back in the 80s, it was your way right away, right? You can go to Burger King, and if you want it cut in half, you can get it cut in half. If you want them to hold the mustard, hold the mustard. Do it your way right away. We are here to serve and, and do whatever you want to, Almighty King, customer. And now everything's about catering to you, meeting your needs, doing it quick. They're feeding human instinct. We're about ourselves. We're about being our own kings. We want to be the point. Hey, when I'm driving down the road, get out of the way. This is my road, right? I mean, you with road rage, you're just doing what you normally know to do. You come in your house, this is my house, right? Everybody, my kids should run up and say, oh, daddy, how can we serve you, right? This is, <laughs> we want to be the point. It, it's about us. I mean, we, we have that mentality. I mean, all joking aside, our, our mentality slips into that. Oftentimes, it's about us. Like, I, you're not. Saying what I want to say right now, I'm in a quiet mood. Fall in line. Right? This may be the things that are deep in your heart or deep in your head. We like to be the point. It's about us. Now, here's, this is huge. This is gospel, Bible, theological uh, principle you must grab onto. And this might sound strange, but I want it to land. I want you to think about it, and I'm going to unpack it for a minute. Listen, God is for God. God is for God. Now that might come, you might, that might land on your ears going, that sounds ugh, egotistical or something like God. Is God an egomaniac? Listen, God loves you. God wants you. But God is not about us. Why? It can't be. It would be idolatry to be all about us. God is for God because there's no other above God. And we are invited into this beautiful relationship of the Trinity. God being before you ever were, there was a relationship within the Trinity. The Father edifying and glorifying the Son. The Son glorifying and edifying the Father. The Holy Spirit working with the three to glorify and edify each other. There's relationship within the Trinity and you were made invited into that. That union, to that perfection. This is what God calls us to. And if God is all about us, what if God was all about us? Think about that. Hey, Aaron, what can I do today to just please you, your every want and your every need? And if he did that with every individual. I don't think you want a God like that. God is for God, and God invites us to come along with him. 
And this is huge that we understand that, that we are invited. It's a beautiful invitation. We want God to be for God. We need God to be for God. That his glory and his power, we are invited in to be a part of that. But we like to think it, evol- it revolves around us. This is earthly wisdom. Listen, verse 14. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your heart, don't boast and deny the truth. Don't boast and deny the truth. The truth. Now watch what those adages are doing here. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, ends with a hard word here, demonic. All those words point to self-service, ourselves, wearing the crown on our heads. Bitter envy, selfish ambition in your heart. They, they don't, uh, don't boast and deny truth. This is about us. Such wisdom, wisdom comes from the earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. This is really reminiscing to John 8. It reminded as I read this where he talks about God not being the ruler of this world, but Satan is the temporary ruler of this world. And a lot of the same type adjectives were used here. Jesus was describing Satan as the king of this world. And if we do these if we follow him, if, he, if we are not for God, we're against God. And these are the type of things that happen. Envy, selfish ambition, and, and in our hearts. What is envy? What is jealousy? Jealousy is not being satisfied with where we are. It's our heart not being anchored in God and God alone. This is why it's important that you get that God is about God. Because God is everlasting. God is eternal. God is sufficient. God is objective truth. God is objective love. God is objective uh, uh, providence, everything that is good comes from God. So God must be about himself, not us broken, fallible beings. For his praise and his glory and his honor that we join into that, that anchors us in something that is everlasting, as something that is all power, powerful, that's something that lasts past the delicacy and the diminishing life that we live right now. That's it. We have to anchor in that. Because everything else will fade away. We've talked about this week upon week, that if we anchor in our jobs, it will fail us. If we anchor in money, it goes away. We anchor in our government. Well, how's that working for you? If we anchor in anything, it's temporal. It's doomed. It will fade away like the wind, as Ecclesiastes says. It's gone. We only can anchor our hearts in God. We anchor in God, we're on overflow. We're overflowing his goodness and his mercy and all the things that are good that are spoke of right here in James chapter three. So look at the result of this when we anchor in these things and when we anchor in this world, when we anchor into temporal things with our heart, the result, verse 16, for where there is envy and selfish ambition, when we're anchored in those things, there is disorder, disorder. And every evil practice, all those things that give us tension and get us going the wrong way is a result of where we anchor our heart. Godly wisdom, listen, this is huge. So here's the other side of that that he unpacks for us. Godly wisdom. Verse 17, but the wisdom from above is pure and peace loving, gentle compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, unwavering without pretense. Now let me unpack this for you in just a moment, or right now. This is the moment. I used to do, when I taught uh, Bible class for our students, we, I used to pose this question about the Bible. I said, is the Bible more of a compass or a map? And I'd have this question, let them think about it for a little bit. I want you to think about this with me. And we would arrive at the fact that the Bible is more like a compass. Now, what's the difference? A map gives you point by point. And even if we think of our cell phones nowadays, if you turn on your phone, we don't even think. We used to think to use a map. Now we're just on program by whatever that phone's telling us and wherever it's telling us to go. Turn left. Right, turn right. And I even my, my watch will vibrate before the turn gets to me if I'm, I'm driving to make sure you, you don't, you know, you're extra careful that you don't miss the turn. 
So it gives us point by point where to go. The Bible tends to be a little more general sometimes, a little more abstract. Um, sometimes m- metaphoric, sometimes, maybe sometimes it's speaking directly to things, it does. Uh, sometimes it speaks um, loosely to something, or we take a principle and apply it. There's some things that are absolute direct commands, but some things are implied. Some things are explicit, and some, pl- some things are implicit. And so we look at the scripture to guide us, and I want you to think about this in the case of wisdom, and what we're talking about with wisdom and, and godly wisdom. That, that godly wisdom, if, this, if the Bible is our compass pointing due north, now let, let's analyze this for a second. If we use a map, maps going point by point, turn left, follow this road, a compass tells us which way to go. Right? It always points due north. Now, if you're going through the woods with a compass, you don't have a map, you're, you know i got to go that way. That keeps me going that direction. But there's a stream here. Do I go around the stream? Do I go through the stream? Do I go far out this way? All I know is I need to get to that point. And then we exercise, if we're, I'm, I'm not using this metaphorically right now, but if you're literally trying to get to that point following a compass, You've got to use your brain, your senses, the things you've learned in the past to guide you. Okay, I know bears live over there. Okay? <laughs> this, this side over here, no bears. Which way do I go? Make a, a, an intelligent decision based on the wisdom you know bears eat humans. Right? So I'm going to probably go right if I know there's a den of bears over here or I saw a mother bear over there or whatever. Or this side of the river's deeper. This is shallow. Exercise wisdom. Go through the shallow. Still going north. Still pointing north. Essentially, I was thinking about this with what we're doing here and, and thinking about what God is saying about wisdom. And I've talked about this over the past few weeks, that wisdom has an ebb and flow to it. It's personified in Scripture. It's not this roadmap of you've got this to do when you're 40 and this to do when you're 41 and this to do in the morning and this to do at night. That's not how the Bible works. That's not godly wisdom. Godly wisdom is getting where God is going. God is for God and staying with him, tracking with him. And the Bible is pointing us due north towards Jesus in all things. And we exercise. Wisdom is like the senses that we're using going through the woods to go, okay, is it this way? And praying through with the Holy Spirit in your life saying this way, this way, this way. I got to get to this point. What's the best way to go through it and navigate it? You get that? It's the Holy Spirit working together with the word he's given us, our compass to guide us towards Christ. I was thinking about this with our, our little uh, logo. Throw that logo up there, Brandon. It's just an extra plug. When I was coming up with this, uh, we are north side. And so um, some people might have said, we had a logo. We didn't really have a logo. We had north side Apopka. It didn't say church in it or anything, but uh, that sign in there is a compass sign, and you see it pointing due north. Uh, so I want you to think of that when you see that, thinking about what that means, points due north. We are north side. So I don't think there was any intentionality in that north side meaning anything, but you can think of this when you uh, follow it, that, that God has given us wisdom like a compass. The Bible is a compass pointing us due north as you think about that. So the Bible is... Our compass pointing us to Jesus. And the result, look at verse 18. The fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who cultivate peace. What is friction? Think about that. What is friction? You know, I I think of the best illustration for this. You could think about a, if if you've worked with wood, two by two piece of wood if you go with the grain rub your hand across it nice and smooth you go against the grain on a splintery piece of wood what's it going to do to you it gives you splinter a lot more friction than going smooth with the grain this is what biblical wisdom calls us to to know where god is going and jump on board with him due north god gives you his word, 
He gives you the Holy Spirit. He gives you communion with him. You're invited in to know him, to fellowship with him, to keep you going the way you need to go. And imply, uh, uh, applying this in our lives, I talked about this a few weeks ago when we were talking about another section of Scripture, but talking about how we exercise wisdom, that everybody's is not exactly the same when we go through certain things in our life, that we use wisdom to get through it. My way of getting through grief is not going to be the same way Wayne might get through grief or a hard day, or the same way that David might not get through we might not get through it the same way. We use godly wisdom to say, uh, to go to God and figure out what do we need to do? Do we need more prayer in our life? Do we need more scripture in our life? Do we need to be around people? Do we need to be away from people? Do we need to be around groups? Do we need to be around individuals? Do we need people speaking into our life about this situation? Or do we need to pull away and have some time with God? This is exercising wisdom. This is praying through it, the ebb and flow of godly wisdom. And asking and being in communion, communion with God with, and with the Holy Spirit and with your church family. There's all these prescriptions given in Scripture to walk through this life. And it's not laid out A, B, C. And I would say I'm sorry for that. Or you might think, man, I wish it was, but God knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. There's reason for that. There's definite reason for that, and it's not laid out. We like to make it ABC, right? This goes back to Sermon 1 when I was here. We like to make our checklist and our rule sheet, but we lose so much in doing that, and we're robbed of so much <coughs> in doing that if we just have these check sheets to get through. And then things start going that aren't on the check sheet. We let go, and the weeds grow up, and stuff gets messy. This is why I believe the Scripture doesn't lay it out like that for us. That we have to stay in communion and fellowship and in knowing to walk the road that God has called us to. Listen, and the good news and that frees us is this. This is the gospel here. Jesus came to this earth and took on the results of our folly, of our destruction, of our friction. He took that. He was at the mercy, submitted himself to the mercy of humans going their own way with the ruler of this world, was he not? And he took on that destruction, that dissension, and went a, 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 and, and was separated from his father on the cross against the grain on the cross. Jesus took our disorder. He took our confusion. The results that foolish living brings, he took on. Everything we're talking about, that leads us into paths of destruction Jesus took on for us. So you might inherit a perfectly lived life and the results of it that he lived for us. His mouth was perfect. His actions were perfect. All these things we're aiming for, he did. And God no longer looks at your folly and your mess up and you going down the road that has bears on it. But he looks at Christ's perfect record that is substituted for you. That's the good news. And that frees us to walk as he walks, to do as he does. We don't just have to say, what would Jesus do? That one was thrown out there years ago. Remember that campaign? What would Jesus do? We look at what he did, what he's doing and what he's going to do. It's given to us in here. Due north, pointing you the right direction, pointing you right towards him. Be in this, not only in this, but praying to God that the Holy Spirit will guide you, will point you, will help you read, will help you make the right decisions of where to go every day. So, hey, tomorrow Monday's coming. Sorry to remind you of that, all right? It's, it's here, all right? And it's a time change Monday, so that's doubly worse. Navigate with godly wisdom your Monday tomorrow when you get up. It's given to you. Listen, pray that God will give you wisdom. We'll wrap up with these three scriptures. Proverbs 2, 6 says, For the Lord grants wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. James 1, 5 says this, If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking, but when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Wisdom starts with God. Psalms 1, 11, 10. Fear, essentially this is saying all, all of the Lord is the foundation of true wisdom. 
All who obeys his commands will grow in wisdom. Praise him forever. God made us to flourish. When we go our own way, we do not. When we go his way, we do. It's that simple. God gives us wisdom to continue to know and go his way. Will you ask for it, church? That's the challenge this morning. Ask for it. Tomorrow's Monday. You can walk in godly wisdom. Let's pray together. God, we thank you so much for you giving us this gift of wisdom. God, we need it. Help us to uh, exercise wisdom as we talk in our speech, as we act in our actions. And God, may we not lay these applications on people way outside of our circle, but may we think of the people we love the most and how are we exercising these acts in their lives with the people that are around us the most, the people that know us best. Are they seeing our tongues being tongues that represent gospel speech? Are they seeing our our, our actions as actions that represent gospel truth? Are we living trying to grab on and hold our hearts clenched tightly in control, or are we giving them to you, living as people that walk in the freedom of Christ? God, help us to know you that we might live uh, wisdom, make choices, not our choices, but your choices. And we thank you so much for your love, for your call, for your invitation to go with you, that you are for God, God is for God, and that you love us enough to invite us in that so we might be about God and the things of you. We love you, Jesus, and it's in your holy name we pray, amen. So in wrapping this up, uh, just, I'm, I'm going to be in the um, hanging around for you to pray, to pray with, to talk, talk to. I'm go- going to invitation mode, but we're going to just invite you afterwards if you want to talk to me about anything you can. Let's commit during this song to pray for godly wisdom. Um, One thing, and I didn't throw out a point this morning, is we live in a a culture of feeling. We go by our gut. And the scripture is saying in this, and I didn't mention this, but this is important that we mention, we don't live by our gut. We live by wisdom. We check everything, not just by instinct, not by gut, not by feeling. We check everything against scripture. Does the scripture speak directly to that? Does the scripture imply it? Does it speak... um, provisionally to it does it speak um, in principle to that and then we talk to others about that so if you're going through one of those decisions maybe this hits directly in this way uh, where you need godly wisdom on it and you're wrestling through it hey this is why we exist to get in each other's lives to help guide you through those situations and not just me but your brothers and sisters that are in here they will pray for you they will toil through those situations with you. That's why we do this, not just to meet together here on Sunday morning and get out of the door, but to do life together, to go through those hard decisions together, to avoid the bear dens together, right? To go, hey, 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 don't go over there. There's mama bear over there, okay? Go this way. That's why we do this together, to lead each other, to help each other, to love each other, all right? Let's, let's sing. Day, <laughs> but we don't have to go alone. Take the name of Jesus with you, and we'll be able to make it through. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. It will joy and comfort give you, take it then wherever you go. Precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name, oh how sweet. name of Jesus, how it thrills our souls with joy. 
when his loving arms receive us and his songs our tongues employ precious name oh how sweet hope of earth and joy of heaven precious name oh how sweet God's grace. Let's pray together. God, we thank you so much for the gift of walking in wisdom. Now, we, may we go into Monday, into Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, walking in wisdom, not going our way, not going by our gut instinct, but asking, Jesus, what do you want me to do? How would you have me go? Help us to stay in the word, to know due north as we continue to walk this earth Why you give us the, the, the chance, the days, the hours to walk it. Thank you for the invitation into your kingdom to sit at your table, to keep going where you're going. We thank you for that. We love you, Jesus, because you first loved us in your name. Amen.